Hey guys, today we're going to kick off part one of this three-part series that takes a look at some of the more common mechanical issues we see when analyzing mechanics here at RPP. While nothing happens in isolation, we're still going to break these issues down into arm, trunk, and lower half issues. This will give some of you out there that have less of an understanding about anatomy um, a good way of understanding what efficient mechanics really are. Today, we're going to kick it off with the arm. This is just a small snapshot of the over 60 data points that we look at when analyzing mechanics for both our remote and our in-house athletes. With our remote, we'll be using video analysis only. Um, and with our in-house guys, we'll use a combination of uh, video analysis and motion capture. Number 20 on the uh, weighted list, shoulder external rotation at foot plant. This can be generally linked to tight internal rotators, prefer, particularly the lat and the pec minor. Um, it gets displayed as at foot plant. We're looking for that arm to be on our mocap. We look for 40 to 75 degrees, okay? We don't want a low arm at foot plant. It really, really puts the shoulder in a provocative position to accept force on. We also don't want it early and way up here, okay, as well. So we're looking for that 40 to 75 degrees to be able to accept force. And um, a lot of times that's poor timing of the lower half with the scap load coming around getting the arm up. So this will be one of those situations where we'll look upstream and maybe find that we've got a short stride that we can lengthen up and give the arm more time. Or maybe we're not getting into our glute and we're not creating um, really good timing with our lower half to allow us to delay that rotation and get the arm up as well. Okay, here we have two examples. On the left, we have a laid arm. On the right, we have an arm that's getting into a good position. Uh, first, we're going to look at the laid arm over here on the left from our mocap. This athlete, as he comes down the mound and he hits foot plant, you can see the arm right here at weight-bearing foot plant is at about 5 degrees. Flat being 0, straight up being 90, we're looking for about 40 to 75 uh, degrees to put that arm in a really nice position to accept force from this front leg. This is a very provocative position for him to be accepting force from this front leg in such internal rotation. And like I said before, this could be come from a number of things. One, it could be, com be coming from tight internal rotators of the pec minor and the lat and the subscap. Uh, it could also be a timing issue with the lower half. Okay, um, maybe he's not striding far enough, not giving the arm enough time. We just lengthen that stride a little bit, puts more force into the ground, as well as getting the arm up. Like I said, you have to play with things, but first things first, we know that we've got a late arm. Over here on the right, we can see that his bum gardener comes down the mound and he reaches weight-bearing foot plant, like right about there. We can see that he's at about... 75 degrees, that 40 to 75 that we're looking for. Um, this gives him a really, really good position for this shoulder to accept this force. Uh, and also, it allows him to get in a really good position to adequately create that whip and lay back and get good lay back and max external rotation um, from the arm being in a good position. Number 21 is elbow flexion at foot plant. This is the amount of degrees of flexion that we get at foot plant. MoCap tells us that we're looking for 85 to 100. The degrees get higher as we go in, FYI, lower as we go out. A low degree of, external, of, of, of elbow flexion, we call forearm flyout. One more thing that puts the arm in a very provocative position, getting too much humeral glide anteriorly to accept force, while a high degree can shorten the lever arm and negatively, negatively affect that flip back into layback and negatively, uh, negatively affect how much layback we actually get. It's not always an arm issue. A lot of times it's a lower half issue. This is a big issue we see with younger guys who pull off really quick, causing that arm to kick back into fly out, putting the arm in a bad position, also making it hard, command, and end up getting a push with the ball. Different size guys, have different degrees we look at. Between that 85 to 100, we have guys, anthropometrics matter. Longer guys, shorter guys fall in different areas of that range. Um, we need to take that into consideration as well. Okay, much like 
shoulder ER foot plant. We're going to look at elbow flexion. And much like the, two, uh, the, the prior, um, this can be caused by lower half timing issues as well. Um, we're first going to take, you know, whether we're above or below the 90 to 110 degrees that we're looking for. Um, both can cause unnecessary stress on the UCL. Um, we're going to look at Otani, who does a really great job of getting that elbow at foot plant into a good position. We take him to weight-bearing foot plant right here, and we can see that arm is around 92 degrees, 90 degrees being straight up, um, and the amount of flexion, the number gets greater as we get in. So this would be 80 degrees. This would be 100 degrees. We're looking for anywhere between 90 and 110, and you can see he's right in, in that area, which is great. Um, for less than, 1, 8, less than 90 to 85 to 90, if the arm was out here, that's going to be called what we call forearm fly out. This, causes, this is a late arm. It also causes um, pain in the anterior shoulder because it's a very, once again, a very provocative position put, to put that arm in. Um, anything greater than 110, where that fist starts to get close, that hand starts to get close to the ear, um, that can compromise the lever arm and cause uh, the, the arm to not get into a great position to get good layback. Um, we don't see this a lot. We see more forearm fly out. But um, for the most part, um, you know, you'll see your guys generally getting between 90 to 110. But if it's greater, um, that can compromise layback. If it's less, that can cause anterior shoulder pain in a later arm. Um, both can be issues of a lot of times younger guys will pull this glove side early and um, it can whip that front, that, that, that upper half around and cause that arm to be a little bit late because the front, the top, the torso is coming around early. Um, and we can stop that by getting better glove side integrity uh, or, you know, lengthening that stride to give the arm more time to get up. Uh, here we see a great stride. We see a great closed upper half and the arm um, at about 92 degrees. Uh, really done well. So we're looking for greater than 110 or less than 90, 85 degrees. They would be red flags for us to uh, address this issue. Number 23 is max external rotation, max shoulder external rotation at foot plant. This is not to be confused with shoulder external rotation at foot plant. This is max shoulder external rotation at foot plant or basically layback. A little different, but very similar. Um, this allows the athlete to carry external rotation longer through the acceleration phase. is generally a product of not being able to get back and retract and get into a good scap load. Um, usually due to, once again, tight internal rotators like the pec minor and the lat. Being able to get into max external rotation, you can have good max external rotation, but if you don't, if you have it early or late, you're going to end up pushing the ball or put stress on the, on the anterior shoulder. We're looking for that max external rotation to be somewhere around very close to foot plant. And it allows the athlete to carry force for a longer period of time in the acceleration phase. So, like I said, it's usually a result of a poor scap load. We will go back and look at scap load. Um, these are, these are, this is how we, our chain of events go in series, how we look at things, how we figure out how something down the lane might be caused by something that happened earlier on. Um, and our mocap is 160 to 180 degrees should the athlete be in-house doing a mocap. Okay, we've got one more arm issue. Uh, Disconnect, that's max shoulder ER at foot plant. Uh, this is basically the uh, maximum amount your shoulder lays back. Um, we, this is another disconnect that can cause unlimited, unwanted stress on this UCL. And uh, it's usually a result, once again, as a lot of arm issues are, the result of soft tissue restrictions of the shoulder's internal rotators. That would be this pec minor, this subscap, and this lat, which attaches from the thoracolumbar fascia all the way up and into the inside of the humerus, okay? Um, excess tone in this lat will make it really hard to not only get into good layback, but actually to spring it forward into the acceleration phase as well. Um, Getting into good layback here, uh, Granky's showing us about 175. We generally look for about 160 to anywhere to 180, 185. 
Um, you know, we don't want 200, 205. That's going to create instability in the shoulder, but somewhere between 160 to 180, we find, is a really good number. This allows us to carry external rotation through the entire acceleration phase all the way in to ball release. Um, one important thing to remember is having a good amount of uh, max external rotation is great, but we really want to make sure it's happening at or slightly after foot strike. We don't want to create this max external rotation early because we're going to end up getting a push with the ball. Um, we want to wait for the arm to get thrown into layback from the force that's applied by decelerating this front leg. Okay, so we're looking for 160 to 180. Here, Grenke's showing us 175, helps us carry. Um, force for a longer period of time through the acceleration phase, helps protect the UCL. Um, a lot of important things that, you know, Grinky's displaying this really well. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. If you're interested in our training material on pitching, hitting, or strength training, you can reach us at rocklandpeakperformance.com or on Twitter and Instagram at rpp underscore baseball. You can also call our front desk at 201-308-3363 or email us at rpp at rocklandpeakperformance.com. Also, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel on the way out.